After three NBA seasons plagued by injuries, lack of a true identity or role, and incremental minutes often coming in garbage time, Bull Bull has seemingly found a home starting for the Orlando Magic, and I couldn't possibly have prepared myself for the type of stuff he's doing on the court. As is the nature with young players on tanking teams, they're kind of letting him do whatever he wants, which has not only made him one of the most exciting players to watch this season, but given him an opportunity to showcase some truly valuable skills, and flashes that foreshadow what he could one day become. When you hear the name Bull Bull, you probably think of his insane build, and rightfully so, as he stands at 7'2", with an incredibly lengthy 7'8 wingspan. What jumps out most to me though, is how well he moves and controls that unique frame. He's very fluid and balanced, which is really noticeable when running the floor in transition. He has real ball handling capabilities, especially from someone of his size, consistently pushing the pace to get downhill, and that much length in the open floor is absolutely devastating. That's because when changing directions or crossing over, with that much momentum, he's able to cover an obscene amount of ground. Like here, where he blows right by D'Angelo Russell, takes one dribble towards the nail to make Cat turn his hips, leaving an outside angle open for him to just step into. It's so extreme that you'll commonly see him pick up his dribble from as far back as the three-point line and still end the possession with a dunk, and due to those massive strides, he can step around anyone or into tight gaps, showcasing some incredible footwork and nimbleness. It's the same thing in the half court, where he's used like a supersized wing, handling the ball on the perimeter and using his length as a weapon to exaggerate moves with hesitations, in and outs, and crossovers. Notice the extended hesitation dribble as he hunts for an angle, and when O'Neal gives up that left hip, he explodes into that open space with two giant steps that serve as a red carpet to the cup. All he needs is the tiniest window of opportunity, just an inch of room for those ridiculous strides to take him all the way to the rim, this time getting cut off as he spins across the lane, only to slam the brakes and take one more step for an easy lay. He's an extraordinary finisher down low, making just under 90% of his shots within 3 feet of the basket, the most of any player with at least 50 total attempts, and if you extend that range to 10, the number remains at about 75%, just otherworldly efficiency. And it's not like he's being spoon fed these looks either, as only 47% of his 2 pointers are actually assisted on, less than names like Jason Tatum. Zion Williamson, Anthony Davis, and Nikola Jokic, among many others. His use of length is masterful, not only with how he carves out opportunities on the floor, but with the way he wraps his arm around or through tiny spaces and gets above the rim for finger rolls, where he shows off ridiculous touch and feel. He even has a floater game and running hook he can go to from a bit further, adding some versatility to his shot diet. He also does that through his arsenal on the perimeter, legitimately offering a fair amount of outside shooting and floor spacing. He's capable of pulling up off the dribble from mid-range and beyond the arc, even off of step backs, straight out of hesitations, or after grabbing defensive rebounds, pushing the pace, and quickly pulling the trigger while on the run. His release point is so high that it's virtually impossible to get a solid contest even if timed perfectly, making him a viable option as a spot up where you also can't give him any space to explode off the dribble or at closeouts with that length, making him a tough cover. Here he's positioned in the corner with Ubre sliding over to tag the roller, and with that long closeout he quickly puts the ball down on a drive, and once that baseline position is given up, there's no way of preventing the inevitable. Allowing him to play off the ball and off the catch like this is a great way to utilize his skill set, where he's also a strong cutter and does a great job at following plays to grab offensive rebounds, and in either scenario, him catching the ball that close to the basket can pretty much be chalked up as an automatic 2 points. He's even a pretty solid option in the post. 
He does lack the core strength needed to back down and punish matchups, but he's got a pretty solid finesse game with his back to the basket, using fadeaways and hooks that again aren't actually possible to contest. He hasn't yet developed much as a playmaker or passer, lacking the vision and processing to consistently make reads, but if he sees an opening, he'll make the most out of it, as the feel is very evidently there. Perhaps what's even more intriguing though, is how his insane physical profile translates to the defensive side of the ball. But before we get into that though, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis in the making of this video. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. They offer talent grades on pretty much any aspect of the game you can think of, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Bulls Finishing as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create and make these shots along with how he stacks up against his peers. This is just one of the many useful tools found on the site that help guide me and many others through their analysis, and by signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription. I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested in signing up. And with that being said, let's take a look at Bull's defense. His lack of real game experience is pretty noticeable. It's important to note that despite being drafted in 2019, he hasn't yet logged a full season's worth of games, and he lacks in some areas you would expect from a young player. He seems relatively lost at times, often late to help, sitting in no man's land in the pick and roll, or not getting wide enough to clog up lanes, and weak positioning in the paint hurts his ability to drive attempts away from the rim as a deterrent. When he is in the right spot though, his rim protection is pretty outstanding. Here he's defending a pick and roll and drop coverage, and when Paolo gets hit by the screen, he's forced to play one versus two. He does a great job at positioning himself to take away any potential passing angle to the roller, while remaining close enough to the ball handler to just obliterate an attempt at a floater. That height and length, when paired with his ability to target the ball, make him an incredible shot blocker, still commonly getting a hand on the ball, even when he jumps real late or is flying into the play, and even when he doesn't make contact, he does a good job at altering the release. That's not to say, he doesn't still have some issues down low though, as he missed times a decent amount of jumps, and his lack of mass or core strength leave him prone to contact. Physicality can throw him off, getting bumped off of spots quite a bit, and he doesn't always close possessions, lacking as a defensive rebounder, especially in traffic. For this reason, Orlando most likes to use him in the role of a rangy forward, covering an insane amount of ground due to his length and mobility where he can eat up space in the lane and help and recover to the perimeter with ease. He's an extremely good closeout defender, almost always getting a hand up on shooters and even sending away a fair share of jumpers, while having solid enough body control and footwork to contain the ball if they decide to put it down and attack. Look at how he moves his hips back and forth while keeping his feet and hands active to not show any driving angle, forcing a tough pull up jumper which he's able to close the gap on. It's the same thing here where Curry attacks his top foot but he quickly shifts his hips and changes angles to remain in front, forcing a step back 3 that he blocks before running the floor in transition for a wide open dunk of his own. They're comfortable letting him consistently defend in space like this, this time matched up with Luka, moving his hips and feet well to keep the ball in front of him at all times, not biting on the up fake, and getting a hand on the fall away jumper. Even when he is caught off balance or blown by, that length allows him to still make a difference, having an insane ability to recover. These raw tools cannot be ignored as flashes of really strong defensive value are there. But for now, it's just small moments and not yet a consistent product, so with proper discipline and more reps against different types of offensive looks, it'll be interesting to track his development. The same goes for his play on the offensive end, where at times he's almost video game-like in the stuff he pulls off, making it known that there's never been a player like Bull Bull. 
If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website, podcast, and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Bull Bull and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.